We are in Glasgow, Scotland, and we're just so happy to be here. It's marvelous. Um, we're at a, 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 a market called Locavore. Highly recommend when you come to Glasgow. Well, you're already here, so I don't know why I'm <laughs> recommending. <laughs> and we're here with Christy Williamson, who is Glaswegian, and who has a stake in Locavore, other than mm. it's a great place for food and bread. Mm. Mm. But also, we are in the corner, a poetry corner. So tell us a little bit about Tell It Slant. So Tell It Slant a bookshop. Uh, was was founded by uh, Ellen McAteer in 2011, I think, um, something like that. Um, and and uh, it was a pop up. It was a pop up bookshop that that, that began life in a space uh, on the other side of town in Garnet Hill, um, and uh, we've never really popped down <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, uh, the, 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 this is this is our this is our home now and and we sell we, we try only to sell poetry books sometimes sometimes there, there's uh, some prose creeps in some pro yeah some some insidious prose <laughs> <laughs> um, manages to find its mm -hmm. way onto the shelves but 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 the vast majority of our stock is poetry um, from uh, local local poets from, from across, across the world. Yeah, local uh, poets from across the world. Yeah. and it's a, it's a. I mean, we've all been looking at it, and uh, it's cash only. But yeah, um, if you search using a favorite search engine, the following words: tell it slant books, Glasgow you will get to a website and you can contact Christy or do whatever you need from there. So mm -hmm. we hope everybody will take very seriously the idea of a bookstore that focuses on the kind of poets taken together on a shelf that you're just not going to find. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say literally anywhere else. So <laughs> anyway, that was, we don't usually do in Modpo videos like this commercial recommendations, but because let's just assume it might be technically profit-making, it's not doing anything close to a profit. It is essentially a service. <laughs> I've never thought of it lately. <laughs> this, poet, this poet, Christy Williamson, did I introduce you? Right here, Christy Williamson. Sophia's here, Lainey's here, Hello. and Leanne's here. And this book, Ooh and Feathers, Wool and Feathers, is full of about 70 poems by Christie. It's not the newest book, mm. but it's got some wonderful things in it. So we're gonna talk about a poem called Unforgettable, and we'll begin by asking you please to read it. Oh, delighted, thank you. Unforgettable. This day o' thine is thy first, thy langest yet, seeing the sky like dew could never think. Ah, on thy en, richt here we was, being the cell like never afore. In this time, this life, it's a do kings with suspension in water. The warm flow for every side is going to be completely forgotten when the heartbeat coming through flesh comes through skin in this new world before lying will be odd as ever can't and there'll no mind coming in to our world on a mare as well forget it. Sophia, th any thoughts, first thoughts? Um, well, maybe this is because of how Christy reads it, uh, which is beautifully, but I've, I, I like, there's this overwhelming sense of like peace when I confront this page. And I think that has to do with like this kind of like suspension water, the oceanic quality of how we come to be people in this world. And like this, this, 
this gesture towards a peacefulness both before, during, and after um, we live in the now is what I'm thinking about. Lovely start. Oceanic. Lainey. First, first day, um, there's nothing like it, right? I mean, the first day of a, of a, as a parent, the first day as an infant. This is your eldest, the yeah. older. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 And your people first. talk about how it feels different, but until you're in the moment, you, you can't experience that. So it, it seems like it's a poem of that welcoming, that a whole new life and a whole new perspective. Everything looks different, and you never forget it. Yeah. Leanne? My favorite line, I think, is coming through f flesh, because when you read it, I felt like the heartbeat was coming through the flesh. Um, you're talking about the baby feeling the heartbeat come through their own flesh, but when I first saw it, it jumped out to me, and I was like, you know, the baby comes through the flesh of the, the woman, and like, the coming, so it's, so that, that parallel, you know, coming through the flesh, yeah. Um, I have a meta-poetic thought, <laughs> <laughs> and the people to my right, let the record know, are laughing, not at the poem, but my, that my first thought is meta-poetic. Of course you do. You know, you're, you're, you are some, you have been somewhat influenced by the kind of American poetry that takes, if I may, here I am starting with your influence of American poetry. We should be here in Glasgow talking only about Scottish poetry, but forgive me. Um, the kind of American poetry that cares about the relationship between the basic words of life, the relationship of human life to all other life, so kind of eco-poetics, if I may, mm -hmm. partly because you are a person of islands, mm -hmm. and your family is, and, the, and poetry. On, on one hand, all that, and on the other hand, the motive for poetry. And the motive for poetry here is, holy shit, <laughs> this unforgettable thing has happened. And I am, on the day of, the afternoon of, the next day, let's just say, contemporaneously going to record this. And so the relationship between what William Carlos Williams calls a new world naked, that's mm. the poem Spring and All. Yeah. Spring and All is the birth mm. of the recycling of the renewal of human life, which is the miracle of the relationship between the land and the sea, because the sea has given forth mm a land, a landedness, and poetry is the most basic way that human beings know how to express that relationship. Mm -hmm. So the poem is also in its new world as a poem, naked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Follow that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's unforgettable. <laughs> <laughs> the connection is unforgettable. Well, yeah, 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 and 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 I and, and I guess I guess every time you every time you write a poem, that's a that's a a, 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 birth. a birth. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. The poem is being birthed. Yeah. Before yeah. our eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's an old poem, and you're surprised we picked it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Why did we pick it? <laughs> um, I, I guess I guess you liked it. Uh, yeah, that's a start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's so unforgettable that you had forgotten about this poem <laughs> and you're encountering it now for the first time in a little while. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I yeah, and, and I, I, I mean, that's that's like you know part of like you know, like that's to do like the like publishing cycles and things like that. You you you, you, you like you you do something, you put it out into the world, and then you. You, you do something else and you put that out into the world. Wait, and that you do something, you put a poem into the world, yeah, unforgettably, yeah. Then you forget about it. <laughs> let it go. Like well, you a child. let it go. Like yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. You let it go. Thank you, Leon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, another but, round of thoughts on this poem, and you can go specific if you want to look at language, um, but it's okay. up to you. I guess I, I can look at language. I'm thinking of is die first, die longest yet. So it makes me consider like our relationship to time and to, like time as a structure 
which we know in this contemporary moment in this world with like everything that happens to and around us but before we're introduced to these social structures what is time like time to, does time to a baby before it's birthed exist really um yeah love that <laughs> Lainey I want to talk about the title unforgettable and the last line where we say only mares will forget it like the relationship between memory who keeps whose memory the impossibility of recording the memory so one meta thought is there's this heightened state of awareness and consciousness with the new birth and you want to write i'm i'm speculating you want to record it um, and at the same time, there's this awareness, well, I might as well forget it because I can write about how I feel, but I'll never feel how I felt. And then there's the question of the, the child being born is not going to remember their birth, maybe on a deep unconscious level, but as a parent, you're never going to forget it. So in a way, you, the, the parent speaker of the poem is the holder of this memory of the birth of the child that the child won't consciously remember. And yet the writer, parent, voice of the poem is also aware of the impossibility of perfectly recording what is unforgettable. What is going to be in the poem completely forget it. Impossible. Forgotten. But trying to do it nevertheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. 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 I love the sense of time in the first part of the few lines, like this day, this day of yours, this day of dying is thy first, thy longest yet. Like it's, it's like you can feel the minutes ticking by. It's like this is the longest day you've had so far, and it's, it's still not over yet. Like it's, it's very present, and it reminds me of how we make each day anew when we wake up, you know, the practice of making the day, and how the, you're marking it as the f baby's first day, and like observing it, you know. I really love the Shetlandic pronouns. I wondered if you would be willing, before I make my observation about pronouns, to just eyeball through and just say some of the pronouns that are here. Would you? Yeah, sure. Um, Does dine count? Dine is a, a, yeah, dine. It's a possessive, possessive pronoun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's in the pronoun family. Yeah, yeah. so dine, die, die, do. Do as you. Yeah. Huh. Die. It's in German yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's, uh, what, Nor it, it's mm -hmm. very Scandinavian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, like, if, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, if, you, if, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, Norwegian. Uh, it's do close is, to Norwegian. Yeah. Do. Um, this probably doesn't really count, does it? Um, um, sure. Do's, do, will. The last one is where, where. Oh, where, where, where. That's, Our. The, that's the one you wanted me to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you missed it. Yeah, you forgot it. It's, it's not unforgettable. <laughs> uh, the, the, I just wanted to say that uh, pronouns are so important in a poem about birth because they are as fluid as the birthing. And, um, and it's just so incredibly great to be an American English reader, or an English reader, alienated from the expectation of words. For instance, the use of thine, which is almost archaic in the Shetlandic, because it's thine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. its relationship to contemporary English is already old, forgotten. Mm, mm, mm. And how respectful is it to address a newborn baby without its sense of identity, except Oce in the oceanic sense of being part of a world, a fluid world, mm -hmm. and now it's our world. But thine is respectful of the fact that mm -hmm. this is a being that doesn't give a shit about pronouns yeah. and the <laughs> yeah. poem just sort of <clears throat> surrounds almost omniatically yeah. with these simple one-syllable wor worlds 
words that introduce one to a world that's going to be full of possessives, but it's resisting mm. the putting a finger on those possessives now, mm. and probably overstating the intention. But while the decision to write in Shetlandic gets you back to the oceanic scene of human existence. Mm. Can I say something about thy? My mother said that thee and thy, what you think of as, as like biblical and holy and like kind of up there, like, but it's really intimate. That's the etymology is thee and thy is like do. It's like the German do, like, like it's the familiar. Do is yeah, the yeah, familiar, yeah. So that's right. So thee and thy were originally familiar yeah. and then became exalted. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne yeah. Brown. The word I was yeah. struggling for in the cognitive words I was using in my comment is familiar. Yeah. This is a familiar yeah. poem in a familial sense. Yes. This is yeah. close. This is a close, yeah. intimate poem. Yeah. Um, you get a final thought or a general thought, and then we'll go around one more time for some quick observations. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I mean, so just to, to go back to the like writing as expression, it, it, which it, which it definitely was, but also like I think this. This poem, and, and, and perhaps every poem, the the act of writing, you 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 are expressing, but also in the act of writing, you're actually figuring out what it is that's happening, like inside and around you, mm. uh, as 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 the poet. Mm. The poem has a heartbeat, and it's yours, since Oliver couldn't translate the heartbeat into meter at that point. Not, not, not that And point. maybe even to this day. <laughs> All right, final thoughts, Sophia? Um, I'm thinking about this oscillation between remembrance and forgetting and how that kind of makes uh, the poem circular in the way that life cycles are. And it's interesting to have a conversation about this poem with four people who have experienced this moment. I'm not a parent, <laughs> so I've only had one side of this experience, wow. and it's not accessible to me right now, consciously. But I, I think but that- But you had like, company at that moment. Yeah, I did, yeah. I'm a twin. <laughs> um, but the, the circularity of it feels inviting to me as a participant in the poem, no matter what, because I'm human. Oh. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Cry. That, was, that was amazing. Not being a parent doesn't mean you're not a participant. So many poems about parents, or from the parental point of view, are alienating to people who've chosen not to have children, or haven't, children, haven't had children yet, or even don't even like children. Babies, <laughs> like me after that air f that flight I took over here with the lots of babies. There's a baby behind me too. I know it just drives <laughs> it was you really crazy. Cute, but as you know, I get the I get the positive chills whenever there's a baby crying. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's just such a respectful thing to say about a poem that a lot of people would think, oh, I'm so alienated by all these parents with their birth experiences. <laughs> but you have one too. Mm. Well. I want to talk about the very middle of the poem, O oh, Suspension in Water. So this is in the womb, is this amniotic prior, primordial moment, and it's in the very center of the poem. And so mm. I'm thinking about how, even though we cannot remember being born, it's also unforgettable. And so for everybody reading the poem, it's also a attempt to remember that state that suspension in water and then to be reborn to be born right now reading the poem wow. or to be in the womb or to be you know suspended yeah i love that you pointed out that line because it's just o oh, suspension in water like the letter o and it's like the the amniotic sac mm. it's like the o is in the middle and the baby is still in the o and it comes out of the o <laughs> it's like the actual <laughs> That is marvelous. And it's my birthday. <laughs> and it's your birth. Happy birthday. Yes. yes. Like you're out of present. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my final thought is about Oliver, the uh, aforementioned. In the O. Oliver. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oliver. Oh. Oliver. Oh. Oliver. Oh. Oliver. 
Moon. Um, the moon. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm thinking about the, I don't know Oliver, I've seen him in the back of Zoom, you know, running around, <laughs> needing you, but I haven't seen him in, in the flesh, as it were, but, you know. Um, to be a poet and write about someone who is part of you in the oceanic, and I use the word in the sense that Freud meant it in the book Civilization and its Discontents. He didn't, ha Freud had not enough respect for the oceanic feeling, which was the phrase he used. Mm -hmm. um, he had some respect. He also wrote about it in the future of an illusion, which is his takedown of religion. Mm -hmm. um, but the ocean oceanic feeling has to be respected and the poem conveys the um, hope that any parent brings a child into a world that will preserve the oceanic feeling sufficient in order to give that life a chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a blessing in a way. The poem, I wonder if speaking of Oliver and being a parent, I wonder if you would read the Declaration of Martha Street, <laughs> which is a similar poem but also incredibly different because it's written in English and it's kind of a, I ha I'm happy being a daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Would you be willing to end with this? Yeah, I'm happy to. I'm yeah, just going to yeah. thank you in advance and thank all of us, <laughs> you guys, uh, because we're world <laughs> is better for this having had this conversation. Amen to that. All right. And Amen here's Christy Williamson reading the Declaration of Martha Street from a book that anybody ever encountering this video should purchase somehow, either from Tell It Slant <laughs> books or from another bookstore. Or from uh, the publisher. Um, <laughs> it should be mentioned. It should be mentioned. It's Lewis Press. Who, uh, yeah. I don't know why I'm pointing at Mike. the mic. Before this. <laughs> That's, uh, I've got gone synesthetic. Uh, and Martha Street, like, uh, obviously we're not going to unpick the whole thing. It's, it's, it's quite simple anyway. But, but Martha Street is the registry office in Glasgow, so that's where you go. Uh, like, people get, ma people get married there, and that's where you go to register. To register for, a baby? Yeah, yeah. Oh, to register. so this is also, so the this isn't just a of, Father's Day yeah, poem. This is a birth poem. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, and so the, this, this is why they sit together. The Declaration of Martha Street. I hereby duly and solemnly declare that this is my responsibility, that I and my actions have knowingly caused five years and more of runny noses, of skint knees, of tears before bedtime, of soap in the eyes, that I have done this, that I will never go back that whatever happens, it's me. I am the daddy. <laughs> and I always will be for the rest of my life. Christy Williamson, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>